I'm going to begin with a quotation from Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House. <laughs> now she said, how lucky the United States is to have reserves of natural gas because otherwise we'd have to depend on fossil fuels. <laughs> Nearly as good as Stephen Gilbo of Greenpeace, who said, global warming may mean cooling. It may mean hotter. It may mean drier. It may mean wetter. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> Every climate change is a disaster. Now, the day before yesterday, these people, and I'm told by Joe Bast, I'm not allowed to call them bedwetters. <laughs> they called it... So I'm going to call them people who have difficulty containing certain very personal bodily functions when they are in a horizontal position at night. <laughs> so the day before yesterday, those people called it global warming. Yesterday, they called it climate change. Today, they call it energy security, and tomorrow, Thanks to you here in this room, they will call it what it is, absolute rubbish. <laughs> At the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, not, you may think, the snappiest of titles, they probably would not call a spade a spade. <laughs> that would be too simple. They would call it a one-person operated, manually controlled, foot-powered implement of simple and robust yet adequately efficacious lignometallic composition designated primarily, though by no means exclusively, for utilization on the part of hourly paid operatives deployed in the agricultural, horticultural or constructional <laughs> trades or industries, as the case may be, for purposes of carrying out such excavational tasks or duties as may from time to time be designated by supervisory grades as being necessary, expedient, desirable, apposite, or germane with regard to the ongoing furtherance of the task or objective in hand, or on the other hand, under foot, Secretary General. <laughs> the climate documents of the UN are militantly obscurantist, month by month they grow ever more absurd. Now look at this graph of global temperatures in Celsius degrees over the last 150 years. It appears in the UN's 2007 climate assessment. It appears in a lecture by the chairman of its climate science panel, and who knows what his occupation is. He is a railway engineer. It appears in a technical document supporting a decision by the US EPA to regulate CO2 as a pollutant. And it also appears in a recent slideshow by a former director at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Research Institute. It is one of the poster children for climate alarm. What it purports to show, these railway lines of Dr. Pachari on the graph, is that over 150 years, there's not much of a, a temperature increase, but if you take the last 100 years, it's steeper. The last 50 years, steeper still. The last 25 years, steeper still. Now, this statistical technique is entirely bogus, and no respectable scientist or public authority would ever have used it. It is a disgrace and an outrage that this is the kind of argument that is being put before us. It is well known that stochastic data curves, those where you can't guess which way they're going to jump next, are highly sensitive to the selection of endpoints for linear regression trends. For instance, the trend on that graph from 1905 to 1945 is twice as steep as the trend from 1905 to the present. Hooray. Problem solved. It gets better. The trend from 1993 to 2009 is plus 3 Fahrenheit per century, from, from 1997 plus 1, from 2001 
minus 2. And from 2005, this is the year that Gore brought out his mawkish sci-fi comedy horror movie, um, <laughs> it's minus 10. The Almighty has a sense of humor. Now, what we've done here is we have used the same bogus statistical technique that the UN and railroad engineer Pachauri, Casey Jones of the IPCC, <laughs> have used. And we have shown precisely the opposite result. Both of us are wrong. This is not a technique that should be used. Here is how it should be done. You will see that the slope on the right there, which I've colored in rather repellent magenta, is precisely identical to the slopes that appear from 1860 to 1880 and again from 1910 to 1940. Now, I was so fascinated when I spotted this that I got out the original data that underlay this graph and plotted it to check on the computer that indeed these slopes are as identical as they appear to be. And then I had a question put down in the House of Lords about it, and we now have the confirmation of Her Majesty's Government, who consulted the IPCC, that there, there is absolutely no anthropogenic signal whatsoever in the temperature record. So that graph was entirely bogus, and that is the truth. Here is another graph you know well, and I put this graph here for two reasons. First of all, it's not only that they've abolished the medieval warm period, or tried to, it's also that at the right-hand end, they have overstated the warming of the 20th century by very, very nearly 50%. And that's something you don't normally see mentioned. But my main reason for showing you this graph, which you all know very well, is that my good friend Craig Idso, for the Center of, for the Study of Carbon Dioxide and Climate Change, maintains a medieval warm period database of scientists and institutions and countries in which research has been published over the last couple of decades, establishing that the medieval warm period was real, was global, and was warmer than the present. And the number of scientists who have written and contributed to such papers has now just risen over 700 for the first time from 400 institutions in more than 40 countries. So I think he deserves a round of applause for that. And I think we should tell him that now, now that he no longer has the excuse of writing the non-intergovernmental panels magnificent report, he'd better get on with his work because he still has 500 papers on the medieval warm period, which he hasn't yet had time to read. So, Craig, get on with your work. <laughs> so, moving along, we come to the UN's latest gaseous halation, which is a report by a committee of what Francis Bacon used to call small men in great place. Under Kofi Annan, a former Secretary General, and this report says 300,000 people are dying every year because of global warming. How dare they? How dare the UN ignore the unprecedented food riots in a dozen regions over the past 18 months, riots directly caused by widespread starvation, directly caused by doubling of world food prices, directly caused by the millions of acres of agricultural land that no longer grow food for starving people that need it, but instead grow biofuels for automobiles that don't, directly caused by a global scam, directly caused by the UN's lunatic policy of bad science, false alarm, and preemptive cringe. <laughs> 